look at the Prophet, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa doesn't only teach us how to pray and how to be charitable to others. He doesn't only teach you how to perform hajj and how to recite Qur'an. The Prophet also taught us how to eat. What was the Prophet's diet? Believe me, if Rasulullah were to invite us to his home, you know, many of us would probably feel like, you know, where's, where's the kebab? Where's the lamb? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi could be described as a semi-vegetarian. You know that, brothers and sisters? The ahadith tell us that weeks would go by and there would be no smoke coming out of his house, meaning nothing is being cooked. The Holy Prophet ﷺ was a semi-vegetarian. He, he didn't eat meat the way that you and I ate meat. You find, brothers and sisters, that the Prophet ate very little. He used to eat fruits, vegetables, dates. Sparingly, he would eat meat. You know, there's a hadith that is attributed to Amir al-Mu'mineen. We all know the hadith. You know, do not make your stomach a graveyard for animals. I ask you, brothers, are we really following this tradition? In fact, I would say that not only have we made our stomachs graves for animals, we've made them into mass graves for animals. Mass graves. You know, if you go to the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes the food in Jannah, the food in paradise. So many ayat, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about the food that he has prepared for Ahlul Jannah. Only two verses mention meat. There are more verses that speak about the other foods. Some of the ulama, they say maybe this is an implicit instruction to reduce our meat intake. Now, I'm not advocating for a vegan diet where that said you don't eat meat at all. Ahlul Bayt have told us not to completely eliminate meat. Imam al Sadiq alayhi salam he says, Kulu lahma fi kulli usbu'. That try to eat meat maybe once a week. Once a week. Can you imagine? Some of us, I don't know if we can handle once a week. But the Imam alayhi salam says, Eat meat weekly. وَلَا تُعَوِّدُوهُ أَنفُسَكُمْ وَأَوْلَادُكُمْ Don't get used to eating meat too much. Don't feed too much meat to your children. This is not a doctor. Imam al-Sadiq is saying this. Why? فَإِنَّ لَهُ ضَرَاوَةً كَضَرَاوَةِ الْخَمْرِ Because meat has an addiction like the addiction of wine. Imam al-Sadiq says, do not eat it too much. And then the Imam says, وَلَا تَمْنَعُوهُمْ فَوْقَ الْأَرْبَعِينَ do not, do not keep your children from eating meat for more than 40 days. And then the Imam mentions why. Meaning, do not deprive yourself or your children from eating meat for more than 40 days. فَإِنَّهُ يَسِيءُ أَخْلَاقُهُمْ it will have a negative impact on their akhlaq. Now you may ask me, how does it impact akhlaq? We don't know. We don't need to know. There are a lot of things that we don't know. Ahlul Bayt, alayhi salam, they have ilmul ghayb. They understand things that we have yet to understand. Imam al-Sadiq says, eat it once a week, but do not deprive yourself from eating meat for more than 40 days because it has a negative impact on your akhlaq. So Ahlul Bayt spoke about prevention, about diet, and we have a hadith that also speak about the importance of being physically fit, physical fitness. And as I mentioned, the Quran, subhanAllah, there are references to almost every discussion that you can think of. You know, brothers and sisters, Rasulullah was known for walking. In Medina, even though he had access to a horse or a camel or a donkey, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi used to walk. You know, sometimes you and I, we want to go to the grocery store. It's right around the block. We get in our car. We burn the, the fuel. We're lazy. 
Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi was known for walking. In fact, there's an ayah in the Quran where mushrikeen are puzzled why God would choose this man as a prophet. What do they say? Allah says in Surah 25, ayah number 7 about the virtue of walking, being physically active. وَقَالُوا مَا لِهَذَا الرَّسُولِ يَأْكُلُ الطَّعَامُ وَيَمْشِي فِي الْأَسْوَاقِ what kind of messenger is this? Why would God choose this man? He eats food like us and he what? He walks in the marketplace. Meaning that even kuffar and mushrikeen noticed that the primary mode of transportation of the messenger of Allah is what? His feet, his legs. He used to walk. In fact, some of the sahaba would say that the prophet was so physically fit that we had trouble keeping up with him, even when he walked. There's a narration that says, one of the companions says, مَا رَأَيْتُ أَحَدًا أَسْرَعَ فِي مَشْيَتِهِ مِنْ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ He says, I never saw anyone walk faster than the Holy Prophet. It would be difficult for us to keep up with him. The Prophet used to climb Jabal al-Nur, you know Ghar Hira, the cave of Hira? I've, I've climbed that mountain, believe me. You need to be physically fit to climb that mountain. The Prophet was a mountain climber. He used to walk even when he had access to more comfortable forms of transportation. Imam al Hassan and Imam al Hussein used to walk from Medina to Mecca to perform Hajj. Of course, they did it for spiritual reasons, but there are also health benefits to this. And the Holy Prophet used to tell Muslims, Teach your children swimming. Teach them archery. Teach them horseback riding. Meaning what? Make sure that they're active. Because Amir al Mu'minin alayhi salam says, Al Mu'min al Qawi khayrun min al Mu'min al Da'if. That a strong believer is better in the eyes of Allah than a weak believer.